I have been a very lucky man in most respects, in birth and education and opportunity. Who was this man, Walter Wheeler, who captained the ship known as Pitney Bowes through its critical, formative years? And how did he engender such passionate loyalty among those whose lives he touched? Mr. Pitney was the inventor. And Mr. Bowes was a promoter. And they got the company going. But what happened with Wheeler is that he really focused on the people in the organization. He focused on how do we run an organization efficiently and effectively that benefits both the employee and the organization. And not everybody had that attitude. The stepson of Walter Bowes, Wheeler joined Pitney Bowes around its inception in 1920, when it was a fledgling stamping machine company. He immediately saw an opportunity and put his salesmanship skills to work. He convinced the post office to allow this equipment, which literally printed postage, and convinced them that it was all right for Penny Bowes to market that product. He negotiated with the Postal Service and with the U.S. Congress the basic framework that enabled Pitney Bowes to get its core business off the ground and to grow that core business in the 1930s and 40s. But before that core business could really take off, Wheeler and Pitney Bowes would face some tough times. Life was essentially a struggle in one way or another. But without struggle and sense of accomplishment, life would be meaningless. Perhaps the most formative thing of all for his public career, after the battle of getting Pitney Bowes established during the 20s, uh, was the Depression and seeing people who were his contemporaries out of work, selling apples, unable to find a job, weeping because they couldn't find a job. And this really stirred his social conscience. That social conscience would blend with his business savvy to create a leadership philosophy that would be prophetic. When Wheeler was named president in 1938, he began to galvanize the power and spirit of the employee workforce in unprecedented ways. He was decades ahead of other business leaders, recognizing the basic principle that if employees felt proud to work at an organization, they would work harder, stay longer, be more loyal, and deliver more discretionary effort. I've been extremely fortunate in the caliber of people around me and working with me over the years. This goes particularly for my associates in Pitney Bowes. He would walk through the plant and call people by their first name and ask about their family. It didn't make any difference where you were a small Mary Calandrelli, okay, Italian lady who spoke very poor English, or whether you were a sophisticated person who came out of uh, college. Everybody was treated basically the same. Wheeler said that the people are the main engine of the company, not interchangeable parts. And you need those people to have change and innovation. So that's what led to world-class production quality and world-class service. The outbreak of World War II forced Wheeler to shift gears. He completely converted the company's factories to war production, a move that was initially controversial, but later earned accolades for Pitney Bowes. Shortly after, Wheeler left the company temporarily to manage the New England War Production Board for the federal government. His salary was a mere dollar, but his social conscience got yet another valuable boost. He became a weekend warrior at Pitney Bowes. And uh, his vice president, Sam Bernard, the engineering vice president ran the company. Mr. Wheeler was in Washington as a dollar a year man, they called him. And he wrote this letter to Mr. Bernard telling him to go over the personnel list and then to compare that with Stanford in terms of nationality, religion, and whatnot, and make sure our proportions are pretty much the same. So he pushed the personnel department to do hiring, to put people from other races, other nationalities, and women into all kinds of jobs in the organization. So he was pre the Civil Rights Movement, pre 
women's movement. Well, Walter Wheeler was the person who would walk out of a hotel if it didn't uh, serve uh, African Americans or Jewish people. And uh, he took some very principled stands when there really wasn't a lot to be gained other than adhering to principles. He was a strong believer in shoring up the community organizations that were critical to delivering vital services. It has always seemed to me crystal clear that the lucky and the fortunate people have a tremendous obligation to pay back to society accordingly. He firmly believed that people in the organization needed to contribute to that community. He encouraged social responsibility before anybody even heard of the word. We became better people, I think, because we not only came to work every day and did our job here, but we, we were part of the community. By the time Walter Wheeler retired in 1973, he had built an impressive legacy and a thriving business. During his half century of leadership, annual sales grew from $3 million to $300 million. The company expanded internationally, developed new products, created new markets, and never lost money. And the seeds of goodwill planted by Walter Wheeler would bear fruit for years to come. I've always had an abiding faith in people and in the potential of most. To me, the greatest miracle of life is the human spirit.